So hi again, have a wonderful day. So this presentation is a continuation of our physical examination on the ears, nose, mouth, and throat. Okay, so before we proceed to our presentation, let me present to you this disclaimer slides. All right, so let's proceed. So again, this presentation is a continuation of the physical examination on the ears, nose, mouth, and throat. This is the part two we're in. The focus is on the mouth and the throat. Again, these are the learning objectives of your physical examination one. Okay, so let's talk about mouth and pharynx. So the cheek, the tongue, and the palate frame the mouth, which is also called the oral cavity or the buccal cavity. So the digestive process starts in your mouth when you eat or when you chew a food. So your salivary glands make a saliva or a digestive juice which then moistens the food so it moves more easily through your esophagus into your stomach. The saliva also has an enzyme which we call amylase that begins to break down the starch from complex carbohydrates into sugar um, to make it easier for the body to absorb. Okay. Now, let's have a brief review of your anatomy and physiology of the mouth and the pharynx. So, this image is the structure of the mouth. Okay. So, the mouth includes the lips, okay, the tongue, the palate, the gums, and the teeth. Okay. okay, this is another illustration of the mouth. Okay, the outer parts of the mouth. We have the lips, the upper or the superior lips and the inferior lips. Okay. We know that the lips are muscular folds that surround the entrance of the mouth. When you open your lips, the gums or the gingiva and the teeth are now visible. So note also the scallop. Yeah. Scallop shape of the gingival margin. Okay. And then the pointed interdental papillae. Okay. okay, so this image show the gingiva okay, of a lighter skinned individual versus uh, the darker skinned individual. Okay, so this is the gingiva. It is firmly attached to the teeth and to the maxilla and mandible. So for the lighter skinned people like me, the gingiva is pale or coral pink. However, on the darker skinned individual, uh, the gingiva may be diffusely or partly brown, as you can see in this picture. Okay, so let's proceed to the tooth, which is part of your mouth. It is also important to assess the tooth of your client. Okay, so each tooth is composed of dentin. Okay, so it lies rooted in the bony socket with only its enamel covered crown exposed. The small blood vessels here, okay, uh, enters into the tooth through its apex. So, ito yung apex. Dito pumapasok yung blood vessels and pass through the pop canal. 
and pulp chamber. So, papasok siya doon sa loob ng inyong tooth. So, now you know that your tooth has blood vessel. You have to take note of the terms designated in the 32 adult teeth for you to be able to describe your findings. For example, uh, you will say in your findings that there is a missing teeth in the um, third and second molar upper. Yeah. That's an example. Or there is Okay, for the teeth, you may say in your findings that uh, there is a tooth decay in the first and the second molar of the lower teeth, left or right. Yeah. Moving on to the tongue. Okay, perhaps you have heard that the tongue is the strongest muscle in the body. Why? Because napakarami niyang function. So, sabi nga nila, the tongue is a workforce that facilitates indigestion, mechanical digestion, chemical digestion, like lingual lipase, a sensation of taste, texture, temperature of food, swallowing, and it even helps in vocalization. Iba, syempre, pag nagsasalita tayo. Okay, the tongue is attached in the mandible, the styloid process of the temporal bone, and the hyoid bone. So, the dorsum of the tongue, okay, this one, is covered with papillae, giving it a rough surface. So, mga papillae ang nakita ninyo dyan. So, the undersurface of the tongue has no papillae. So, you have to note also the midline lingual, this one, the midline lingual frenulum that connects the tongue to the floor of the mouth. Okay, this is the frenulum. The salivary gland lie on each side of the lingual frenulum. As mentioned in the previous slides, the tongue has many functions. However, the main function of the tongue is to detect taste. There are 10,000 taste buds found in the tongue. That's why we are able to identify the taste. Kung bakit masarap yung ice cream, kung bakit masarap yung pizza. But for the older adult, there are only 5,000 taste buds that are working. That's why certain foods may taste stronger to you if you are adult or young. If you are older na, ayun, sasabihin na ng mga lolo't lola nyo, walang lasa yung niluluto mo. It's because um, hindi na nagpa-function yung half of the taste buds. Kaya ngayon, enjoy na natin yung mga food. Wow, natin, no? Bata pa ako, no? Smoking also can reduce the number of the taste buds of a person. So, wag kayo mag-smoke. Mawawala rin yung panlasa nyo. Okay. So, the taste buds are sensory organ that are found in your tongue that allows you to experience the taste that are sweet. Okay, dito pala, no? Matitaste natin yung sweet, salty side of the tongue, sour, uh, posterior na, no? And the bitter, okay? Bitter taste. Okay. So, above and behind the tongue rises an arc. Okay, yung arc. Formed by anterior pillar and posterior pillar. The soft palate and the uvula. So, ito yung uvula. The hard palate. Okay, so it's important that you have to familiarize this one. Lalo na during your physical exam for you to be able to give your findings. Okay. The mucal mucosa here lines the cheeks. So, each parotid duct. Meron kang parotid duct. Uh, sometimes termed as the stenson duct, opens into the buccal mucosa near the upper second molar. Okay. 
So now let's move on to the health history of the mouth and pharynx. Okay. Please take note of the following common and concerning symptoms like sore throat that, that could be a sign of uh, upper respiratory infection. You have to check. Is there hoarseness of the voice? Okay. Again, you can also utilize your old card here for you to um, uh, formulate your questions. Okay. Um, you check if the patient is a smoker or allergies, or there is a voice abuse, sigaw ng sigaw, hypothyroidism, tuberculosis, or tumors. Okay. Check also for lesions. There could be aptus ulcers or a sign of nutritional deficiency. Okay. So check or note also for sore tongue. It, this could be a sign of nutritional deficiency. So you have to, to check the, the lifestyle of the client. Okay. Bleeding gums could be a sign of gingivitis. Toothache. Okay. There might be some tooth decay. Is there a dysphagia or difficulty of swallowing to any particular food? You have to double check also of the reason why. Uh, nagkaroon ng dysphagia. Okay, difficulty of swallowing. Okay, you have to check if there is mass in the throat or there is uh, to decay. Okay, or kaya hindi siya makakapag makain ng maayos or any problem uh, sa kanyang mouth, parts of the mouth. So, check for the past history. Okay. Naka-experience ba si patient ng sore throat before? loss of voice, dental, mouth, or throat surgery, or trauma or injury? Is there a, a history of infections, oral cancer, and sexually transmitted infections? For the family history, you have to check for allergies, smoking or exposure to cigarette smoke, or secondhand smoke, a stroke, tuberculosis, and again, you have to use your genogram. Okay, for the lifestyle habits, you can ask your patient the following questions. Do you brush and or floss your teeth? How many times a day? Baka naman once a week, once a month, okay, or pag naisipan lang. And that will guide you uh, if the if the patient needs a um, health teaching about oral care, okay, do you use tobacco products? Do you smoke recreational drugs? Do you drink alcohol? Uh, what is your past and present occupations? Do you use dental dumps? Okay, no buy dental dumps. Okay, these are the uh, protective barrier. No protective barrier yet. It is actually a very thin, flexible uh, piece of latex okay, that protect against the mouth to genital or mouth to anus uh, contact during uh, oral sex. Okay, so all of this are contributing uh, uh, or risk factors or factors for developing a possible oral cavity problems or diseases. Okay, so after your health history or your subjective data, it's now time for you to confirm those subjective data you've gathered during your health history taking. So now let's proceed to physical examination of the mouth and the pharynx. Make sure that you have the following equipment. Pen light, tongue blade, or tongue depressor, gloves, and gauze pot. Doing your physical exam, these are the focus. First, check the lips for the color, moisture, lumps, ulcers, cracking, scaliness. For the oral mucosa, you have to check again for the color. It should be pinkish. And there should be no ulcers, 
white patches, nodules, these are um, abnormality. For the gums and the teeth, you have to check also for the color. Is there swelling or ulcerations? The teeth alignment, a dental caries or looseness or loose teeth or dentures. So these are the abnormal findings of the lips. We have here an example of abnormalities, no? Angular chalitis. So it starts with softening of the skin at the angles of the mouth and followed by fissuring. It may be due to nutritional deficiency or um, uh, commonly due to overclosure of the mouth. Sino ba yung um, laging nakaganyan? Yung may mga, lalo na yung ibang may uh, psychological or mentally uh, uh, problem patient. Okay? Uh, the saliva wets and macerates the infolded skin, often leading to secondary infection with candida. Another abnormal finding is the actinic chalitis. Okay. It is a precancerous uh, condition that results from excessive exposure to sunlight and affects primarily the lower lip. Wherein the lower lip loses its normal redness. So as you can see, parang naging balat na lang siya. And may become scaly, somewhat thickened and slightly averted. So, these are another um, abnormal findings of the lips. We have here the herpes simplex, or what we call the cold sore, or fever blister. Yeah. It is a virus, HSV, or the herpes simplex virus, that produces recurrent and painful vesicular eruption of the lips and surrounding skin. There is a small cluster of vesicles that first develop. Okay, usually, uh, the healing of herpes simplex uh, takes about 10 to 14 days. And here, this is another abnormality of the lips, the angioedema. So, angioedema is localized subcutaneous or submucosal swelling caused by leakage of the intravascular fluid into the interstitial tissue. So, my edema nga, no? uh, It is usually a benign and resolves within 4 to 8 hours. It can be life-threatening which it involves the larynx, the tongue, or the upper airway. Okay. Or it develops into anaphylaxis shock. So, pwede kasi yung cause nito is allergy. That in, it, if, if it involves the larynx, of course, kung nag-swollen yan dito, pwede mag-swollen din yung larynx, yung, yung daanan ng iyong air, your airway. So, hindi ka na makahinga. So, that's why it's life-threatening. Okay, so these are another abnormal findings of the lips. We have the hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, which is also known as osler weber Rendu syndrome, wherein you can observe a multiple small red spots on the lips. Okay, uh, this can also affect the mucosa or the oral mucosa, the nasal septal, and the fingertips. And another abnormality here is the putz jagger uh, syndrome. Uh, there are brown pigmented spots in the, in the dermal layer of the lips. It can also affect the butyl mucosa and the perioral area. So this kind of spots may also appear in the hands and uh, the feet. So this kind of spots rarely affect appear in the nose okay so another findings or abnormal findings of the lips is chandry of syphilis uh, this ulcerated papule with an indurated edge i usually appear after three to four weeks of incubating uh, three to six weeks rather of incubating infection from the spirochyte Triponema pallidum. 
So, the primary lesions are common in the pharynx, anus, and vagina. So, another abnormality is carcinoma of the lip. So, the presentation is like actinic chelitis. This is a kind of squamous cell carcinoma that usually affects the lower lip. So, it may be um, scaly, black, as an ulcer with or without the crust. And para siyang nodular lesion. So, the cause of this is, especially to those who have fair skin and have prolonged exposure to sun, they are um, common of developing the start of carcinoma of the lips. So, you have to be very careful. No, you always, do not expose yourself in the sun. Moving on to the buccal or um, oral mucosa. So, we have here a condition what we call mucoedema. Uh, it is a grayish, blue-white coloring on the buccal mucosa. So, this can develop where the upper and the lower teeth meet and it is irritated from sucking or chewing. So, na-observe natin yan. Minsan, masakit yung sa side ng ating dilag. And another abnormal finding here is the cancer sore. So, the cancer sore uh, is also called as aftos ulcers. They are usually small, shallow lesions that develop on the soft tissue in your mouth or at the base of the gums. This is unlike cold sores that um, they don't occur in the surface of the lips and they are not contagious. This can be painful, however, um, it can make eating and talking difficult. Okay, so this image simply show you how to uh, assess the inside or under the tongue using your gauze spots. That's why you will need your gloves, okay? And for you to check the, the right side, the left side, okay, of your tongue. Okay, check for the roof of the mouth or the palate. Check for the color, the architecture of the hard palate. Okay, so to uh, differentiate soft palate, versus hard palate, take note that the soft palate is the muscular part at the back of the roof of the mouth. So, it sits behind the hard palate, okay, which is yung hard palate nasa outer siya, no? Which is the bony part of the roof of the mouth. So, you know that the function of your palate uh, is important in swallowing, breathing, and speech. Okay. Check for the tongue and the floor of the mouth. So, the tongue should be located in the midline. Okay. Um, of course, attached to the frenulum. Okay. And then, uh, it is symmetrical. Uh, you have to check the movement of the tongue. You can ask your client to say, ah. Ask your client to uh, lift the tongue up. Uh, and then, side, left, right. Okay, that is to check for the symmetry of the cranial nerve number 12, your hypoglossal. Check also for the color of the tongue. It is a somewhat pinkish, okay, and the texture is rough. These are abnormal findings of the roof and the tongue, or roof of the mouth and the tongue. Okay, we have here the image of the cleft palate wherein there is an opening or split in the roof of the mouth involving the hard palate also or, or the soft palate, okay? Another abnormality is the symmetric protrusion. Uh, it suggests a lesion of the cranial nerve number 12, the hypoglossal, as shown in the picture, wherein the tongue points towards the lesion. Proceeding with the 
Uh, assessment of the fire rates, you can ask the patient again to say ah, uh, and you can use the tongue depressor as needed uh, for you to be able to view the fire rates. Inspect the soft palate, the anterior and the posterior pillars, the uvula, yung parang bell, okay, the tonsils, so the uvula and the pharynx. Note for the color and symmetry. Note for any presence of exudates, swelling, ulceration, and tonsillar enlargement. Okay, to uh, grade for the tonsils, okay, those are uh, how the tonsils graded by size, okay? Positive 1 if it is visible, positive 2 if it is between tonsillar pillars and uvula, positive 3 if it is touching the uvula, positive 4 if it is touching each other. So, maga na talaga siya. So, cranial nerve number uh, 10 paralysis no this is an example this image is, is an example of cranial nerve 10 or the vagus nerve paralysis where in the soft palate a uh, fails to rise okay and the uvula deviates to the opposite side it points away from the lesions Okay, findings in the gums and teeth. So we have here uh, marginal gingivitis. Yeah. It is common uh, during adolescence or early adulthood and pregnancy, wherein the gingival margins are reddened and swollen, and the interdental papillae are blunted, swollen, and red. So another abnormality of the gums and the teeth, we have here the acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. This is uncommon form of gingivitis that occurs suddenly in adolescents and young adults and are usually accompanied by fever, malaise, and enlarged lymph nodes. So the destructive uh, necrotizing process spreads along the gum of the margins. Uh, the red painful gums uh, bleed easily and the red is found. So another abnormal finding here is the gingival hyperplasia wherein as you can see in the picture there is a gum enlarged by uh, hyperplasia those are swollen into hip up masses that may even cover the teeth causes include a phenytoin or dilantin therapy so this may occur during a pregnancy puberty and those patients who have leukemia so another abnormality of the gums and teeth we have here the pregnancy tumor or epilis pyogenic granuloma so this is the presentation is red purple papules of granulation tissue from in the uh, gingival interdental papillae this may also appear in the nasal cavity and sometimes in the fingers So another abnormal findings of the teeth is we have here the attrition of teeth or recession of the gums. This usually happens in many elderly people wherein the chewing surfaces of the teeth have been worn down uh, by repetitive use, yeah, so overuse, so that the yellowish or the yellow brown dentin become exposed, which is a process called attrition. And another um, abnormality is the erosion of the teeth wherein the teeth may be eroded by a chemical action you have to note here the erosion of the enamel from the lingual surfaces of the upper incisors this usually results from recurrent regurgitation of stomach contents as in in those patients diagnosed with bulimia So, another abnormal findings of the teeth, 
we have abrasions of the teeth with notching. Yeah. So, the biting surface of the teeth may become abraded, as you can see in this picture, or notched by recurrent trauma, such as holding nails or opening uh, bob pins between the teeth. Yan, ginagamit yung nipin natin, no? So, kaya nag-lead ganyan, pang kagat-kagat. And then, another abnormality here is the Hutchinson teeth. Our in, uh, this is a smaller and more widely spaced than normal. So, tingnan nyo, malalaki yung spaces, no? Tapos, iba yung presentation para siyang mga molar. Okay. The sides of the tip taper toward the biting edges. Yan. The upper central incisors of the permanent, okay, are most often affected. So, the teeth are the sign of congenital syphilis. Okay, moving on to the tongue. Abnormal findings in or under the tongue. So, the first image here show a geographic tongue. Geographics, parang mapa. In this benign condition, the dorsum shows scattered smooth red uh, areas denuded of papillae. Uh, together with the normal rough and coated areas, they give map-like pattern that changes over time. And another example here is the abnormal finding of the tongue is the hairy tongue. So, we have to take note that the hairy, yellowish to, to brown or black, hypertrophied and elongated papillae on the tongues or on the dorsum of the tongue. This is a benign condition associated with candida and bacterial overgrowth. So, antibiotic therapy and poor dental hygiene may also be a cause of this problem. So, it may occur spontaneously. So, we have another abnormality here, fissured tongue. As you can see, you know, the presentation of the tongue, there is a fissures appear with increasing age. And pag tumatanda, sometimes term as furrowed tongue. So, the food debris may accumulate in the uh, surfaces and become irritating. Okay? At nagkakaroon ng fissures, fissures tongue or fissured tongue, which is usually benign. So, uh, to napakakintab ng tongue, di ba dapat the normal tongue should be uh, um, rough. Here, we have a smooth tongue or atrophic glossitis. So, a smooth and often sore tongue, sumakdi siya, that has lost its papillae, uh, sometimes just in patches that suggest a deficiency in Vitamins like rebuflavin, uh, niacin, uh, folic acid, vitamin B12, pyridoxine, or iron. Okay. Or due to treatment with chemotherapy. That's why this occurs. Okay. So, another abnormality of the tongue, we have here the candidiasis. You have to note the thick a white coating from candida infections. The raw, uh, this one, the raw red surface, uh, this is where the coat was scraped off. The infection may also appear or occur without the white coating. So, this is usually seen in the immunosuppressant a patient or those patients who have uh, chemotherapy or prednisone therapy. So, another abnormality is the hairy leukoplakia. So, this whitish uh, raised asymptomatic plaques, as makapal siya compared to candidiasis, uh, with a feathery or corrugated pattern commonly occur on the sides of the tongue. So, this is unlike candidiasis. These areas cannot be scraped off. So, hindi siya natatanggal. This condition is caused by Epstein-Barr virus infection. And this is usually seen in the patient diagnosed with HIV or AIDS. Okay? 
So, another abnormal findings, varicose veins under the tongue. So, these are small purplish or blue-black round swelling that appear under the tongue uh, with age, no? Habang tumatanda. This dilatation of the lingual veins have no clinical significance. So, another, nakita nyo na rin to kanina, yung cancer sore, no? Kanina naman, nasa mucous membrane siya. Ngayon, nasa under the tongue. It can appear under the tongue. Um, another abnormality is the mucous patch of syphilis. This is painless lesions in the secondary stage of syphilis, which is very highly infectious, nakakahawa. It is slightly raised, it is oval, and covered by a grayish membrane. It may be multiple and occur elsewhere in the mouth. And another abnormality here is the leukoplakia. With this persisting uh, painless white patch in the oral mucosa, okay, the undersurface of the tongue appears a painted white. Yan. So, nagiging white, diba? Dapat, uh, pinkish din dapat yun. Patches of any size raise the possibility of squamous cell carcinoma. And it requires a biopsy. So, moving on to uh, another um, abnormality of the tongue, we have here the tori mandibularis. It is a rounded bony growth yeah, in, in the inner surface of the mandible. Those are typically uh, bilateral, asymptomatic, and this is harmless. So, another abnormality uh, carcinoma floor of the mouth yeah so this ulcerative lesions is in a common location for carcinoma so dito siya medially note the redent here area of the mucosa this is called erectoplakia so this suggests malignancy Moving on to the tonsils. Okay. This first image uh, may look like an abnormal tonsils. However, this is just a large normal tonsils. Okay, this may be large without being infected, um, especially in the children. They may protrude medially, okay, beyond the pillars and even to the midline. These white marks are not exudates. They are just reflections. So this is the abnormal tonsils or the exudative tonsillitis. Okay. Okay, as you can see in the picture, uh, this there is redness, okay, red throat, and it has a white dish or white exudate on the tonsils. Uh, together with fever and enlarged cervical nodules, uh, this increases the probability of group A streptococcal infection or infectious monocleosis. So, if you check the lymph nodes, the anterior cervical lymph nodes are usually enlarged in the patient with exudative tonsillitis. On to the pharynx. So, this picture shows an image of pharyngitis. Okay. So, this two picture shows a redden throat without exudate. So, wala namang white dish na nakita dyan or pass. In this picture, redness and vascularity of the pillars and the uvula are mild to moderate. On the other hand, in this picture, redness is diffuse and intense. And therefore, each patient would uh, probably complain of sore throat or at least a scratchy throat. 
So, possible causes could be uh, viruses and bacteria. So, if the patient has no fever, exudate, or enlargement of the cervical nodes or lymph nodes, the chance of infection is by either of the two causes, group A, streptococci, and Epstein-Barr virus. So, Another findings or abnormal findings in the pharynx. We have here diphtheria. Yeah. So, an acute infection caused by uh, Corinibacterium diphtheria is now rare but still important. The throat is a dull red, okay, and the gray exudate or pseudo membrane is present on the uvula. So, nagiging puti yan. Pharynx and the tongue. Yeah. Kita nyo yung whitish that involves the tongue. Okay. The airway may become obstructed. Therefore, a prompt diagnosis may lead to life-saving treatment. Kasi pwede siyang um, nag-enlarge or pwede siyang swollen. So, Another abnormal finding here is the thrush on the palate or candidiasis. A thrush is a yeast infection due to candida. There is a thick white plaques that are somewhat adherent to the underlying mucosa. To another abnormal findings of the oral cavity, we have here an image of a Kaposi sarcoma in AIDS patient, wherein there is a deep purple color of lesions, as you can see in this picture. Uh, a low-grade uh, vascular tumor associated with human herpes virus 8. So, these lesions may be raised or flat. So, these lesions can appear in the oral cavity and may also affect the gastrointestinal tract. So, here is another image of another abnormality of the palate, what we call the torus palatinus, where, it, where uh, wherein there is a bony growth in the midline of the hard palate. This is fairly a common in adults, common child. Its size and lobulation uh, vary, you know? so although this looks alarming at first glance, but this is harmless. So, okay lang daw yan siya. Okay, so, another abnormalities. We have here the four dye spots or four dye granules. Okay, so these are normal. Uh, sebaceous glands that appear as a small yellowish spots in the buccal mucosa or this can also appear in the lips but in this picture it is seen in the anterior tongue and the lower jaw so this image shows a uh, complex spots that are an early sign of measles or rubiola so there are small aspects that resembles the grain of salt on a red background. So, parang maliliit na sin. They usually appear on the buccal mucosa near the first and the second molar. So, lalo na sa mga baby, no, you have to check kapag meron siyang mga rashes, baka makikita mo yung complex spots, baka may missiles si baby. Okay, so moving on to another findings of the oral cavity, we have here the petechiae. These are small red spots that results when the blood escapes from capillaries into the tissues. Okay, petechiae in the buccal mucosa, as shown in this picture, are often caused by accidentally biting the cheek. Mayroon so, oral PTK may be due to infection or decrease a platelet, especially those who are diagnosed with uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever. Or, it can also appear to those patients experiencing injury or trauma. 
So, leukoplakia. So, meron na rin to in the previous slides, no? It is a thickened white patch that may occur anywhere in the oral mucosa. So, that ends our physical examination one. And these are the references. Before I end this presentation, uh, let me remind you that your future is created by what you do today, not tomorrow. Study hard. God bless. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.